So today, I figured I'd talk with you guys about uh, the Supermoto and how uh, the guy that rides a sport bike has made how the transition has been to a Supermoto. Because a lot of you guys are asking me that, so I figured I'd uh, figured I'd answer it for you because um, it is a big change and. Uh, a lot of you guys have seemed to be interested in uh, the differences and how I like it and how I how I feel about it. Uh, let's close those up. Okay. So one thing to keep in mind about my opinions of this bike is that I bought this bike knowing, or not really knowing, because I've, I've never ridden Supermoto, but you know, expecting certain things. I don't expect... I didn't buy this bike with false expectations, right? I didn't buy it to replace a Super Sport, right? I didn't buy it to go, you know, 140 on the highway and stuff like that. I bought it to ride around town. Huh. I bought it to ride around town and to, uh, and to have fun on, you know? which it has done exactly that. It's, it's been everything that I bought it for. But a lot of people are like, you're gonna get bored with the power and stuff like that. Once again, you don't buy a 250 Supermoto for power, right? You buy it for the fun factor. You buy it because it's really light and it's nimble and it's fun to flick around. If I bought a, if I wanted to buy a powerful Supermoto at a you know, I'd have gone with a more powerful one, like a 400 or something, or all the other weird-ass numbers that Supermoto seem to have, like 530 and shit like that, I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, just, hold on, my nose is itching like a motherfucker right now. Ah! So anyway, oh, I did it. Holy fucking balls. So check that out. Uh, Meadow. What about the Meadow? Nothing? Nothing after Meadow? <laughs> but uh so yeah I bought this bike with the intention of knowing that it's not super powerful but they would be really light really cheap on insurance really fun to ride around and it's been exactly that I have absolutely loved this bike and I have somehow stumbled upon a really rich neighborhood good googly Atlanta White House alright well there you go so yeah, I, uh, so how am I adjusting to it? The, uh, one of the big changes was the body position, which I've now come to, you know, I'm, I'm used to it at this point. Uh, and it, it didn't take long to get used to that. It was just, you know, whatever, you're just sitting upright now, as opposed to really leaned over. Uh, the, the biggest deal was the, my mic position, actually, and having to change all that crap up and whatnot. Have I drifted upon another school? I did a vlog a while back ago where I just drove into a school, like a, a cul-de-sac, and the school was at the end of it. What is this? Lakeside High School? There you go. Lakeside High School. <laughs> I have no clue where I am. This is what happens when you just go down random roads. But anyway, I'm really enjoying the bike, but I feel like that's because I bought it with the uh, with the correct expectations and I didn't have a, a false sense of what the bike was for uh, with the whole you know planning on getting uh, an R6 later down the road I, I was not going to try to replace an R6 you know it's no point because if I'm going to have this and something else and eventually it's no point having two of the same bike so yeah I, I really feel like this has a lot more power than people give it shit for um, I get a lot of questions of like, you're going to be bored with a 250, blah, 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 uh, But I'm really not. I, I really, you know, I can, it can wheelie, which is a real positive. Um, uh, what's going on up here? I do not know. Expect delays. I will expect delays. But yeah, the, the power is, I feel like it's there, you know, like I... I've ridden the Ninja 250 a little bit, and I feel like this has got ample power for a bike, you know? Like, especially like a starter bike. 
Uh, I don't know if I would say this is a better starter bike than a Ninja 250 because of the torque. Uh, the first gear is really, really torquey. Uh, which is a normal thing for a supermoto, but you know, when you're learning riding and you're learning that... Uh, <laughs> the guy looked at me and he was like, yes, you go ahead. So yeah, the uh, when you're first riding, you know, you don't know what the, you're doing with the clutch, really. Uh, a really torquey first gear is a little... could be a little scary, a little dangerous, you know, because you, you let that clutch out too much and either you're going to stall or you're going to drop it, you know, or, you know, drop it because of a stall. Or, you know, if you got too much, you're giving it too much throttle, you, you could wheelie, you know? It's very easy to wheelie this thing in first gear. So, I haven't decided if I would recommend this for a starter bike. Once you're used to a clutch, though, it's a fantastic little bike. It gets really good gas mileage. It's light. It's light as shit, actually. I, it blows me away how light this is. I, when I first sat on a Ninja 250, I kind of held it between my legs and kind of threw it back and forth. Well, this bike, I I can, I mean, it, obviously you can do that, but you can, it, just the amount you can do that is kind of crazy. But that was me coming from a 600, you know, like a Super Sport Series bike to, uh, to a Supermoto and then to a, the Ninjas when I was riding those. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really fun, 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 fun bike. Uh, but you have to, you know, you just, you, you can't buy a bike with false expectations, you know, and expect this thing to to go really high, high speeds and stuff like that. So I feel like as long as you buy a bike and you don't uh, you don't expect it to do stuff it wasn't made to do, uh, you should be good to go with it. You know, don't... Oh, I'm about to fuck this van. <laughs> Supermoto for the win. <laughs> uh, ooh, a leaf. I haven't seen a leaf yet. Don't want this Nissan Energy uh, uh, electric cars. I was gonna say energy cars. I don't know why. Uh, so yeah, when buying. All right, we're gonna. This is the people I uh, have to live around in Atlanta. Had a red, light a green light, just chilling. Um. Check these houses out. They're pretty cool. So yeah, just don't buy uh, a bike with a false expectation of what it can do and what it was meant to do. And you should be good to go if you're thinking about getting uh, a Supermoto. Wait. I, if, I, if I am where I think I am, then I'm somewhere. <laughs> I think... I might have wandered onto a place that I know where I am. Damn it. This always happens. So it's a good bike to start on because you can actually afford it. And the thing that I really like for a starter bike about this bike is, um, it's it. from what I've read, I haven't tested it. <laughs> Obviously I don't want to test it, but it's supposed to be really durable. You know, so if you drop it, which, you know, the thing everybody says is, you're gonna drop your first bike regardless. Um, I'm sure there's some people that have not dropped it, but or dropped their bike, and I would say you haven't dropped your bike yet, but blah, blah, blah. <sighs> that Camaro just went straight on through that thing, that intersection. But yeah, I would, uh, except for the freaking torquiness. I mean, I like it, you know, but if I recommend a bike as a starter bike, I don't want, you know, one of you guys, one of my subs watching this video and saying, oh, Chase thinks it's a great starter bike, I'm going to start on that. And you get it and you you pop the clutch on accident, you know, and you give it too many revs. And then you 12 o'clock the dang thing and you're sitting there on your back and your bike's all on the side of the road, screwed up. And you're like, damn you, Chase, you said it was a start, good starter bike. So I try to put a lot of thought, thought and attention into stuff like that before I tell you guys, you know, because if you guys are going to listen to something I say, I want it to be as accurate as, uh, as I can as, as I can possibly have it. So, 